The walls are all now wiped down. They're about ready to start painting. I'm just gonna do a first coat that only hits these relatively unpainted areas. That way, when I go ahead and I do the top coats, I'll have a more even base and you won't see the stripes showing through everything. By doing it this way and doing only these areas that really need the first coat, I'm gonna save myself about two to three coats on the top coat. Otherwise, it would take about that much to build it up to have a consistent color throughout the entire area. If I look farther down the wall, you can see there are some smaller dark spots farther down. Uh, those are from me cleaning the lower part later so down there is not quite dry enough yet however because all the spots that I'm worried about are up higher I am going to start with those hit those now real quick and then uh, once those are dry I can start doing the top coat the trick for touching up a lot of these little spots that have no paint coverage is to not overdo the paint coverage or else you'll have the opposite problem I'll explain a little bit more about this in just a second one thing I want to note about this first coat is it's not about putting a ton on, it's just about trying to seal those areas that were previously exposed. As a result, you probably saw I didn't even really re-wet the roller when I was doing these. My goal was just to get a little bit on throughout, that way it'll match better with the rest of the paint. Because this paint is very yellow, otherwise you can see here this is the white and then right next to it is a little bit more of a yellow hue and that's kind of consistent like that throughout. I don't think the base coat of white that was on here is very thick, so as a result I don't want to overdo it with these white areas I touched up or else I'll have have the opposite problem where we'll have these really thick white bands and uh, those will show through potentially. I'm gonna give these about 30 to 45 minutes to dry. That's more than it should need because it's fairly warm out today, but I wanna make very sure that this is dry before doing the top coating. Otherwise, like I said, those uh, uneven bands of color will probably show through. Paint in here has now had about three hours to dry, which is more than I was intending to give it. Coverage is still a little bit light, especially over this wood area. Everywhere else is fairly good though. It's close enough that when I put this first coat of the top coat on, it is gonna not show the stripe through all the way and that's all I was really going for. So for the top Top coat I am using the same exterior semi-gloss that I used on the garage project I have a lot of that left and additionally as I said there's not really any lighting in here and uh, I don't really have the desire or the time to put lighting in here my effort and my money is better spent elsewhere but anyhow that exterior semi-gloss as we saw in the garage project does reflect a lot of light it does brighten up the space quite a bit because of those factors I'm hoping that I won't need a light in here anyhow after that paint is applied I've decided I'm not going to paint the baseboards at the bottom I am however going to paint the ceiling and this top trim with the white because as I figured out when I did the rest of the house when I first moved in all the ceilings looked absolutely disgustingly off-white when everything else was newly painted next to it to avoid that I'm just gonna hit it all in here so I'm gonna go get that set up now and then I'll get started painting this as always, before you begin painting, especially on a bucket this size of paint, you always have to make sure everything is thoroughly mixed before you pour it out. Otherwise, you're not going to have a consistent batch of paint throughout the entire bucket. In addition to that, you'll want to make sure that you're pouring it only after you've masked off or covered the floor around the area that you're working in. That way, if you spill some, you don't accidentally ruin the floor. Here you can see I'm using a piece of cardboard that is actually just about the right size for the floor in the closet, and that's going to be masking the floor for me pretty well. After wetting the roller, you'll notice I'm going top down again while painting, and that's because you're more likely to drip any paint that comes off the roller onto a lower section of the wall. So for that reason, if you're working from the bottom up and you accidentally make another big paint blob fall on a lower part, you're probably going to have to redo that section, and if you don't touch it up in time, you'll probably have to sand it down and redo it later. Working from the top down is always the easiest because you're more likely to catch those drips as you work down anyhow, and you'll have less rework later on. Unlike the garage project, this did not need an initial ceiling coat because this was an already painted surface and the only portions that were unpainted we touched up on that first quick layer. As a result, we can go directly into a relatively heavy top coat on this, but you don't want to go so heavy that you get runs, otherwise you might have to rework those down the line instead. Using a brush, I hit all the corners and trim pieces last, and again I'm trying to work top to bottom on these. When you're going around the edge of the baseboard, really make sure to take your time. That way none of the paint that's new spills onto the old paint and leaves a really uneven line or a bright spot in the middle of that old paint. Having finished the trim, corners, and edges, I go back and do a quick second coat. And one thing I do want to point out is the massive paint blob that's on my right thigh. If you have hairy legs like me and you get a big paint blob like this on your thigh, I highly recommend you wash it off before it dries. Otherwise, the hair is going to come off with it, and it's quite painful. Some say I'm still out there crying to this day over it. 
And for the record, those people who say that, they're correct, and I'm still crying about it. On a related note, this should also serve as a reminder of why you should only wear clothes you don't really care about when you're painting. Especially in a tight space like this, there's always a high risk that you're going to get them on the clothes and ruin them, so don't wear good clothes to do something like this. If you plan on reusing the roller in the future for more coats, make sure you bag it and stick it in the refrigerator. Other than that, you're ready to clean up. I now have the first, not quite two, but probably like one and a half coats done of the exterior semi-gloss in here. Uh, it's a little tough to see on the camera, but there are a lot of areas, especially here in these corners, that you can still see the old crappy coat showing through and the coverage isn't great. I got other plans tonight anyway though, so what I'm going to do is leave this so it sits overnight and it all dries out so I can see what the uh, final coat looks like and figure out what areas I've got to hit more heavily the second time. With that said, I'm going to continue this video probably tomorrow when I get a chance to do another coat in here.